His literary work has been making waves in the South African literature landscape for more than three decades now, and some of his uh, notable works include novels such as Waiting for Leila, Kafka's Curse, and his critically acclaimed Bitter Fruit. Ahmad is now back with yet another page-turner that he titled Dicky Lady, Child of Tears No More. And in this book, he takes us on a journey of a generation of women who are named Dicky Lady, who together form the backbone of the story. He now joins me in studio to help us unpack this detailed offering. A very good morning to you, Mr. Dango. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us and welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, take us through the synopsis of this book. What is it all about? Well, it's basically about a family who grew up in uh, a mixed township called Nuclear, or as we used to say, Maglera, which was next to Sapphire Town, Western Township. And okay. this is where uh, communities just live together until apartheid came mm. and arbitrarily uh, decided uh, so-called Bantu must go here and Indians here and so yeah. forth. Yeah. This family moved back to their homeland of Mahikeng, um, mm. where they settled. In, uh, and the father, strangely enough, was an activist and took a job with the uh, new homeland government there. Mm. But the daughter, the eldest daughter, Dika Ledi, uh, became an activist. She was forced to flee the country after she terribly injured a security policeman who tried to rape her. Mm. I, I won't describe for your views where she bit him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she had to flee. And her brother, Pizzo, went to New York where he married an African-American woman. And that's when the other Dicka Lady was born. And these two these generations of Dicka Lady, I changed the title to, because Dicka Lady means tears, and this mm. is child of tears no more, show how if you stand up, women stand up to the world, they can actually change it. Mm. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a story over many, many generations of these women, how they uh, pre-apartheid era, po uh, post-apartheid mm. era, how they uh, face, face many, many, many challenges. Now, Mr. Tango, most of your book put a spotlight on, uh, on how women bore the brunt of apartheid during uh, the years of the struggle. And in this particular book, you highlight, uh, I mean, the same issues uh, of, uh, through women of various generations who have the same name. Dicky Lady Edith just described it, it means tears. Take us through that. Well, I think uh, maybe it's to do with my personal experience. When we were young, growing up in nuclear, uh, my aunt worked for Ahmed Timo. She was arrested with him. She was detained for uh, six months. My sister, Jessie Duarte, um, she was in solitary confinement mm. for more than a year. And my mother always had to bear the brunt of what happened to us, the boys. Uh, two went into exile, but it was always the women. And also what I observed growing up in nuclear, when the police came and the apartheid police came, they seemed to make women their target. Mm. And I don't know if you remember in the other novel, but The Fruit, the woman who gets raped by a security policeman, he doesn't do it simply for his pleasure. He uses her as an instrument to get her husband to talk. Sure. And, and I think this is something that we, this generation of mine, the men, must actually remember about all the things that women did to change our country. Mm. And having touched on the issue of the previous book, your uh, Peter Fruit, mm. I mean, it, it exhibits a sensitivity of the struggles of women. In, in all generations, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. Um, I don't think I've overdone it because I also talk about what the men went through. But as I said, you know, I think it is the women who bore the brunt. Yeah. Um, you know, especially if you think about it, even when migrant workers, when they took the migrant workers out of Eastern Cape, sent them to Johannesburg, it was the women who stayed behind and had to look after the families. Mm. Um, mm. When the husbands disappeared or fled overseas, it was the women again who had to sustain the families here. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Tango, I'm not normally an emotional freak, but I just cannot help uh, immerse myself in the indignations and the suffering and the struggles that the people during the apartheid years endured uh, during those uh, difficult times. And I guess the focus is uh, on, on the family, uh, rather the family, uh, the, uh, the family drama within a very difficult situation at that particular time sets this book apart from the rest of other literature. 
Yes, I think um, it's because of my personal experience in there. The, in fact, one of our neighbors was a young woman called, girl called the Kaledi, and her mm. brother was Piso. And yes, I don't know where they are, you know, mm. but we, you know how children are. We grew, we played together, uh, colored Indian, African, it didn't matter to us. We were all friends. Yeah. And uh, the day they were forcibly removed, I remember my grandmother out in the city screaming at the policeman, and we all ran out. And on the back of the van where they were sitting, Pizza was crying, the boy. The lady was shouting at the cops mm. uh, in Tswana, you know, something like, that. one day I'm going to fix you buggers. <laughs> <laughs> And what I particularly like about this book is it's not only about the issues brought about, uh, brought about by apartheid, but it's the small issues, the small challenges that can actually make their way to the present time. Yes, look, uh, I think we should be realistic. We expected after 1994 the miracle would happen mm. instead of making long-term plans. We really need to have a long-term plan to change um, this country and we need to invest in the young. Mm. That new generation is a recipe for a renaissance or a recipe for disaster. Mm. So I, I think that is something that, that's very important. And this book deals with the challenges that some of these young people face. Yeah. And as I've said earlier on, I'm not really an emotional freak, but ha having gone through this book already, it brought tears to my eyes because it takes me back to the years that those people uh, endured through uh, apartheid. I mean, what is it that you want your readers to get out of this book? Well, you know, I, I, I remember walking in the streets of Newclear, and I don't know if you remember this song. Very much, very Makeva used to sing it as well when the cops came. She used to say. Utla utla mahua baring arie komido lens, and she yeah. turned into her. And we walked with the torches, and the torches says, Utla utla ma torchi baring, one's darkni, one's poor lively. <laughs> you know, and those memories come back to me. Right. Um, because what we saw was the destruction of a community that lived together peacefully. Mm. An absolute destruction. Just the bulldozers came one day and smashed homes destroy things, remove people, arbitrarily deciding you, Setswana, you belong here, you are Koza, you belong mm, there, mm. you are Indian, you belong there, you know, as if they were God and deciding, like, right. like we were apples, you were green apple, yeah. you were blue apple, you were black apple. You All know? right. Yeah. Ahmad Dango, you're an absolute literary genius, and uh, this is an absolute masterpiece, <laughs> I assure you. That. Well, thank you, yes, I well, hope people will read it. <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah. And they definitely will after this interview. All, All right. right. Thank you so much for chatting with us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Indeed. Now, uh, that's uh, Ahmad Dango. He's an award-winning author, and he was speaking to us about the release of his latest novel titled Digga Lady, Child of Tears No More, a read that tells the story of a child born in the United States to an American mother and an African father. And <laughs> just seen there you can also share with us some of the books that you are currently reading or have read all you have to do is to send us a picture or the relevant caption of your current read your pick of the week you must read for 2017 and the one you were hoping was going to be great but turned out to be rather disappointing and for the month of November we are inviting all our viewers to come and join us right here on the morning lives white couch for the book review slot so that they can tell us more about the books they are reading or have read so if you if you want to come in and review those books just send us the book and the relevant caption our Twitter handle is at Morning Life SAPC, hashtag Morning Life SAPC. Our Instagram is at Morning Life SAPC. You can also email us at morninglife at sapc.co.za.